Welcome to lesson 6.3. In this section, we are going to talk about how to justify a claim um, based on a confidence interval, and we're still working with population proportions. So we're going to interpret it and justify our claim, um, and we're going to look at the, how we can affect the width of a confidence interval and what's called the margin of error. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. We've got our essential knowledges here. Um, the confidence interval, again, contains um, either contains or doesn't contain the true proportion. Um, it's based on a random sample and we will have a certain level of confidence, usually 90, 95 or 99% confidence that we can capture the true proportion. Um, and we will do that. We could do this repeatedly, but um, in practice, we may not be able to always hit it because things may be changing. Certainly, um, when we're talking about political situations, things like that move as current event ha events happens. So why they can't take a poll in um, March and to determine, to determine what's going to happen in December. Okay, so um, we're going to then um, make some claims. Uh, we're also going to look at how we can, in fact, and change the width of the confidence interval um, if we change the sample size, we can impact the uh, proportion. And if we use more people, the width will decrease. Um, so as we get more people, we'll have less variation or we'll have the interval, the interval of our confidence intervals come closer. And it'll be related, um, inversely related as one over square root of n. And we also can affect the width by changing the level of confidence. If we have a higher degree of confidence, we're gonna need, um, to be more confident, we're going to need a wider interval, okay? So as the confidence level goes up, the width of the interval goes up, okay? So, um, and then the last thing is, remember we talked about the margin of error, which was the z-score times that square root expression, the square root of success times failure over n. Um, that is what's called the margin of error. And it's the confidence interval is two times as long because you take the mean plus the, the margin of error and the mean minus or the p hat plus or minus the uh, margin of error. So um, a couple sentences you want to write this down and you are going to just fill in the blank. Mem try to memorize this statement. Um, my, uh, I think you all know, my wife also teaches AP statistics. She has her students actually sit down and write this. This is one of their assignments, write this 10 times. I don't think this Young's gonna do that for you, but you're filling in the blanks. So you're just going to, we estimate with whatever, and this comes from the problem. Okay, this is gonna be a number from the problem. Okay. This is gonna be the low number and the high. Okay, so you're gonna give them the, the values in here. And then this is from the problem. Go back and tell me what the problem is about and don't change the wording. Don't even try to be liberal or like about it, the wording. Don't make it sound better. Verbatim from the problem is the safest bet, okay? So that's how we interpret a confidence interval. We, we want to give that back. They're, they will be looking for that on the AP exam, and we will be looking for that um, on the um, assignments. And then the explanation, uh, a certain percentage confidence interval, um, it contains the true proportion of whatever we're dealing with. And again, the population, um, you want to deal with the context of the problem. I lost my captions. I guess uh, we'll just keep going. Okay, so um, anyway, let's move on. I don't know if you like those closed captions. I thought those were kind of cool. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at how to impact the width of the confidence interval. There's two ways. The first is to decrease the interval. Like some, remember we talked about in the last lesson, the, we can have a really wide interval, but that doesn't help me if I'm gonna say the actual percentage of registered voters is between 10 and 90%. Well, that doesn't help me. That's too broad of a range. So how I can bring that range closer together is by sampling more people or more getting a larger sample size. So if I wanna have a smaller interval, I will have to shorten that, um, I'll get more samples. So let's look at an applet here. And what we're gonna have is we have a proportion that's 50%. So 50% is the true, actual um, 
number, the, the pro true proportion, and I want a 95% confidence interval. So if I take a sample of size 20, I'm, I actually did capture the mean this time. So 95% of these time, of those confidence intervals I would generate would capture this green bar in the middle. And notice the range of my, or my margin of error is 21. So I have a roughly a, 40, a 42 um, range in my confidence interval. My margin of error is 21. So if I sample it again, I captured it and I captured it. And finally, I think I'll miss one here sooner or later. Oh, I missed one. So I got it 92% of the time and I could put on a bunch more. But what we want to do is notice how wide that interval is. It's about a little bit over 40. What happens if I ratchet this up to, let's say, 100 people and take a sample? Notice that went from a 21 um, margin of error now down to a 10. I've shortened the bar. Do you see how smaller the um, gap is? And I'm still going to capture it about 95% of the time. Oh, those are right there. I got about 95% of the time if I do this. I sample, what am I sampling now? 100 people versus 20. If I sample 100 items in this population, I'll hit it about 95%. I'll get the true proportion about 95% of the time. I got 96%, but that's close, okay? And so that's how I can capture it. Um, that, or that's how one way I can influence the width of my confidence interval by upping the sample size. If I would take this up, up to 200 and sample 200 versus originally I was doing 10, when I sample, notice now the interval is only 0.07. I'm shrinking. Notice how smaller those intervals are. Each of those bars is a sample of 25, and I'm making those intervals smaller, my confidence interval narrower by doing more people. But the problem is if I sample too many, I'm going to lose independence. Okay, so I have to keep that 10% rule, but I have to, I want to get a nice number. Plus, doing 200 samples is a lot. If I'm trying, I mean, that takes a lot. If I'm measuring trees, I have to measure 200 trees. Imagine how long that would take, okay? So um, that's one way to change the width of the, by taking more. So there's a balance between the width of my interval and how many I can actually do, okay? So there's another way, oops, did I do this? Okay, um, so, um, so that was the first way by doing it by decreasing by increasing the sample size. The next way we can change the width of the interval and influence the width of the interval is by changing the confidence level. So let's go back to that applet again and reset it. Okay, so we start with 20. And if I sample now, I still have that 21. Again, I'm still doing my 50% and I'm dealing with um, 95% confidence, but what if I want to be more confident? Let me say we go up to our friendly 99. What happens when I went from 90 to 99? Do you notice? Look 90. What happened to each of those confidence? It got wider. To be more confident, I have to give myself more room for error, okay? So if I spread it out more, I can be more confident, but that is, um, that may not help me. So if I want to go the other way, if I want to be uh, have a smaller interval, I have to be less confident. I can be more precise, but I'm, then I can't be as sure about my answers, okay? All right, so let's get back into it. Um, so that's two ways to impact it. We can uh, change the sample size. We, If we up the sample size, we can narrow it down, or we can change the confidence level as we increase. We wanna, if we want a higher confidence level, we're going to have a wider range, okay, in our interval. And again, margin of error is that we're going to have our P hat and we're going to have a spot above and a spot below. So those two pieces are that piece above and that piece below are called the margin of error. And it's two times. The, the entire interval is two times because we're going to have one margin of error above and one margin of error below. Okay. And we'll have these formulas on our confidence, on our um, formula sheet. You'll have the confidence, you have the statistics statistic plus the critical value times the standard error or the margin of error, okay? And that is 6.3. You'll have a couple of con assignments and you'll have an assignment in Google Classroom. Hope you're having a great day.